Yes, John Frusciante, the time has come to tackle this guitar hero, uh, metaphorically speaking, his habits. I have gotten more requests for John Frusciante's habits than any other guitar player, and it's not even been close, which is very interesting to me. I didn't realize how much people appreciated his guitar playing. I know he's obviously a great guitar player, but you learn something new every day, so I have been listening to tons of Red Hot Chili Peppers and other projects that Frashani has played guitar in. And as you know, I am not trying to match his tone. I'm not trying to show you exact licks in these habits videos, which I have a ton of fun doing. I try and dissect the guitar players playing and figure out how to take what they do and infuse it in my own guitar playing and give that knowledge to you so you can use some of the best tricks and tips from your favorite guitar players. So let's get on with it, shall we? We are going to start with the chord style that Frushani favors, just like in that Under the Bridge intro that I did. So if you know me at all, you know I am very fond of one type of chord. You know what that chord is? That's right, it's triads. And guess what? John Frusciante also loved triads. Just look at this chord progression. So we have a E major triad in its second inversion. Then we have a B major triad in root position. We have a C sharp minor triad, root position. A G sharp minor triad, root position, and then A major triad, root position. So we have all triads, and in between those, Fushani will do these little uh, whittly woos. <laughs> They're like really Hendrixy, but again, based all on triads. So you can really see the value of triads here, right? You have this uh, triadic shape, and then this one. And he's using his little Frusciante-isms. Uh, this is just a couple notes out of the E uh, major pentatonic scale. And he doesn't get much more technical than that. It's just real foundational, kind of Jimi Hendrix-esque triads and pentatonic stylings blended together nicely. So to incorporate this really popular style into your guitar playing, learn your triad shapes. Uh, there's four string sets of triads, uh, EAD, ADG, DGB, and GBE, and there's three uh, positions for each triad on all four string sets. So some of them are the same, like this C shape is the same as this C shape. Um, and you'll just have to memorize where the notes are on the neck. If that is something that's interesting to you, then check out my course, Guitar Super System, linked down in the description, and you'll learn everything about triads, triad arpeggios, seventh chord arpeggios, and a whole lot more. So the next element of Frushani's guitar playing that I am really, really into is his groove. And every great guitar player has groove, but you can just tell when Frushani's playing something, it's got that like extra stank on it. <laughs> So he has this really uh, just innate authenticity to his funk grooves. Uh, again, I'm not trying to compare myself to Frushani, but I'm really, this is one thing that I really have to emphasize about funk guitar specifically, is you have to understand the pocket. You need to know exactly where that pulse is and then stand right behind it. That's the key to the best funk grooves to me is just that tiny behind the beat uh, little idiosyncrasy, if you will. So anyways, I would start with four beats. And then you have this upstroke to be your anticipation. This is the part that pulls you behind the beat. So it's an anticipation, like a 16th note anticipation uh, before the downbeat. So it would be something like this without it and with it. So I just have a C sharp minor seven chord here. We have a root, flat seven, and minor third. 
everything else is muted by my left hand. And the upstroke, of course, is all raked, muted strings. <laughs> The left hand is keeping things in check on the upstroke and then fretting. It's up to you what kind of rhythms you want to add in. I could play that stuff all day long. That is one of the definite habits of Frushani is just the overall stankiness in his groove and that can be accomplished by hiding behind the beat just a nanosecond to find that pocket. Now breaking down some of the lead stuff that Frushani likes to do, the most difficult thing for any guitar player to do is to make each note really mean something. To have solos that are really melodic and memorable uh, even if they're simple. So that's really what I struggle with even teaching. It's, it's just such a hard thing to teach melody. You have to kind of just be conscious of it while you're playing, which is very difficult to do. It requires a lot of mental training because you can kind of get off into your own guitar land, as we all know. So a perfect example of that is the solo from Can't Stop. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the key it's in, but I memorized it just by hearing it. <laughs> Something like that, right? So what an epic solo, and it's so simple, but it's so memorable. I have great difficulty writing solos like that. Uh, so that is just something to keep in mind. It's a definite habit of Frushanti to be conscious of melody. Even the Danny California solo, I just remember hearing it so much that it's in my head. I've never actually sat down with the song to learn it. So I can just kind of figure it out because the melody is so good. <laughs> So awesome. So uh, think about making your solos more melodic if you want to tap into your inner John Frusciante. It is certainly something that's on his mind when he's writing solos. Now I have to admit, John Frusciante isn't the guy that I think of first when I think of hard, difficult, extreme uh, guitar playing, like virtuoso style, but the dude can rip. He was in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. There's a reason he's one of the most worshipped guitar players ever. You don't get that way by being a hack. And a perfect example of that is the riff from Snow. Uh, I actually use this riff in my practice routine and it's like a great warm up. Uh, trying to alternate pick it and keep it clean is very difficult. <laughs> Here's a little revelation for you. The whole progression. All triads. We've got our G sharp minor triad in the second inversion. And then we've got E major triad, root position. And then we've got B major, root position. And then we come up here, F sharp major root position. And then it cycles back around, ending on an F sharp first inversion major triad. So really tapping into Frusciante's habits means learning your triads all over the guitar neck and then understanding where the pentatonic scale can blend together to form those little flourishes. Also, understanding that groove, even in this song, it's got that laid back feel. So having that stanky groove uh, that Frushani loves to employ in a lot of his guitar playing, whether he means to or not, it just comes out. Uh, that's a sign of a great guitar player, by the way, having your own voice. Yeah, I'm still working on that one. Just 
barely behind the beat uh, to obtain that funky groove. And then of course, playing solos that aren't necessarily simple for the sake of being simple, but that say something. Solos that are memorable, uh, they don't have to be crazy technical, although you can have technical elements. Again, we're not trying to become Frushanti here, we're just trying to take some of his knowledge and imbue it in our own hands to continue down this path of guitar awesomeness that we are all walking along. It's a long journey, uh, but there is no destination. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, check out Guitar Super System, my course linked in the description if you want to learn about triads and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff. And until next time, keep shredding.